join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. Concerns over a crypto ban are fading fast in Russia today. Da. Welcome to the Daily Forecast, February 10th, 2022. I'm Angie Lau, editor in chief of Forecast covering all things blockchain. Well, Russia's central bank suggested a ban on crypto just last month, but now there's been a complete 180. We're going to take a look at that story and a whole lot more coming up. Let's get you up to speed from Asia to the world. Well, let's get going with some of the biggest stories coming out of Asia today. First up, China is taking the lead on creating NFT standards for the world. According to a Chinese state-owned news report, an NFT technical framework proposal led by tech giants Tencent Holdings, that also includes another giant, Ant Group, has been approved by a specialized agency of the United Nations. Now, the standard proposes technical and security requirements for digital collectibles on the blockchain. The phrase digital collectibles is used in China, by the way, to avoid references to NFTs, which state media have criticized over speculative nature of it. However, Players in the NFT space don't have to do anything quite yet, as standards produced by the UN's International Telecommunication Union Study Group do not become mandatory until adopted by national laws. Question is, which nations will adopt them, if ever? Meanwhile, Pac-Man creator Japanese video gaming firm Bandai Namco is adding a new core competency to the metaverse. It's planning an intellectual property or IP metaverse. Using its array of games and content, the entertainment conglomerate is investing 15 billion yen or around 130 million US dollars into the project. Namco says its metaverse aims to better connect fans with the company and its creations, which include the globally popular IPs Dark Souls, Dragon Ball, and yes, Pac-Man. The move follows fellow Japanese gaming giants Sega, Square Enix, and Konami all recently expressing interest in or embarking on blockchain-led projects. Seems Asia cannot get enough of the metaverse right now. You can find those stories and more at Forecast.News. Meanwhile, Russia has had a change of heart on crypto, shelving concerns over a blanket ban on crypto. The country's central government agencies have reached an agreement when it comes to regulating crypto. Forecast News' Timmy Shen has more. The agreement reached by the Russian central government agencies mandates licenses for exchanges and taxes on large transactions. The document which was signed off by the central bank and the finance ministry states that crypto trading will be strictly regulated with a focus on investor protection. Russian business newspaper Kommersant reported that the government and the Bank of Russia are preparing a draft law classifying crypto as a form of currency rather than as digital financial assets by February 18th. Just last month, fears were raised after the Bank of Russia called cryptocurrency a pyramid scheme and recommended a comprehensive ban, but the finance ministry suggested regulation instead. This move has put those fears to rest, with the government saying the move to legitimize the circulation of crypto in its economy will minimize the threat to financial stability and reduce the use of crypto in illegal activities. For Forecast News, I'm Tini Shan. Crypto markets are back in risk on mode as just about every currency among the top 10 by market cap has risen by double digits in the last week. Are we at the cusp of a trend reversal or is this just a short term pop for the new economy? In the hot seat once again, Michael Wu, CEO and founder of Amber Group with all of the answers. Great to see you again, Michael. Great to see you, Angie. Okay, so Michael, is the sell off of the last couple of months in digital currencies behind us? Do you think we have a base in place for major coins like Bitcoin, ETH, or Solana? What do you think? I think the major paradigm shift this year is, of course, uh, the, the rate hiking cycles, right? A lot of money printing will be reversed uh, in short term. Um, now, you know, this recovery is sort of uh, a combination, uh, in my opinion, of both you know, the strong fundamentals people continue to recognize with the crypto ecosystem itself, with you know some um, uh, post reaction to you know the fact that people already accept. Okay, um, um, we already accept 
the the Fed or, or in the case of you know mm -hmm. Bank of England, they already started hiking rates. So I think these two sides are still battling in terms of you know uh, being uh, drivers of the price action. So in the near term, you know I'm cautiously. Uh, uh, optimistic. I, th I do think you know uh, the, the last self sort of found a good uh, sort of uh, 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 sort of support level for uh, prices uh, for Bitcoin was somewhere around thirty thousand for Ethereum uh, yeah. right below two thousand. Um, but you know if we go back even below there in an sell of I won't be surprised. I think that would be a good opportunity to buy as well. Yeah, that support level being at 30 and there's no doubt more volatility, but at least we know where everybody is seeing those levels at. Switching gears now, Reuters is reporting that North Korea is using cyber attacks, particularly on cryptocurrency assets as a source of revenue to fund its missile program. And that's quite a disturbing development. I wonder how this impacts the market. What's your sense of it? I actually think this has been happening for quite some time, and now you know Reuters is reporting it, so the mainstream uh, market start to hear about it. But this is already a known fact. Uh, we know there are a lot of uh, uh, dedicated hacking groups out there. Um, you know, from some from you know uh, specific countries, some uh, you know more self. Governed, I think we just gotta continue to 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 handle the security both on chain and in terms of you know uh, organizational procedures as crypto companies better. There are also positive developments such as you know the the, the New York DOJ uh, is reported to have uh, seized uh, the uh, 3.6 billion dollars of Bitcoin that was hacked from Bitfinex in 2016, and that will you know at least give uh, the market is some comfort that you know the law enforcement is working with the crypto native companies to eventually uh, protect their interests, protect their assets with an additional layer of uh, legal uh, protections. Absolutely. And finally, India appears to be pushing ahead with cryptocurrencies. The government imposed taxes on crypto assets in the recent budget, which appears to be kind of like a tacit legitimization of digital assets. Is is this? Also a bright spot for the market. A huge economy with 1.4 billion uh, population with a very young and digital native population as well um, is recognizing uh, the, the, the legitimacy of this crypto economy. I think that's tremendously positive. Of course, you know, the Indian government would, would love to have some tax income from this uh, large and, and becoming even larger industry. That's totally understandable. Mm -hmm. We've seen you know, countries like Japan and Korea who are seen as pioneers in the crypto uh, industry uh, uh, as governments already have, you know, uh, either already have put out uh, tax regimes or are rolling out tax regimes for crypto. So um, I think this is very, um, a very respected decision. This is uh, totally uh, uh, expected. If they are going to legitimize the industry, they're gonna tax it, right? So, so I think that's tremendously positive news for the, for the industry and for us. Second most populated country in the world, joining the new economy. Thanks so much, Michael. Always good to have you. Debriefing. And that's the Daily Forecast, bringing you the biggest stories from around Asia, Monday to Friday. For more, visit forecast.news. I'm Editor-in-Chief Angie Lau. Until the next time.